But I'm just going to read the end of, of accident. Um, for those of you who haven't gotten to the story or forget, um, it's, it's mostly about Sherman and Chicky, who are the two youngest Vincent boys. Um, Sherman, they've, they've gone to a party, and uh, Sherman has gotten very drunk, and he's given Chicky a ride home, who's nervous to get into the car because he is drunk. Um, and he gets out right when they're very close to home. And he hears, Sherman continues driving on, and he hears the crash. And his car has hit a hydrant quite near their house. So Chicky runs up. He has blood on his face. And he says, you know, stay there. I'll go get help. So he goes to his sister and her boyfriend who are, who are at home. His father and, and older sister are asleep. So they come out on the porch, but Sherman has already stumbled sort of up the driveway. He's there. And um, Caitlin, who's the sister who's upstairs, says, what's going on? You know, and they're, be quiet, don't wake up dad. You know, God forbid that dad know anything bad is going on in the family. Um, and Caitlin says, sees that there's, you know, that he looks bad and goes to wake up their father. So this is their down, down on the driveway. Delilah turned, frowning into the shadows. Sherman, what are you doing? He's stumbling around. He had gotten on Minnie's bike and started to pedal away, weaving across the driveway, his knees jammed against the handlebars. Gotta go get the car, he said. I'm waking Dad, said Caitlin from above. The window went rattling down. How, Delilah pleaded. Hal and Chicky were still on the porch. Will you come help? Hal went down onto the driveway. From the edge of the light came the clatter of the bike falling over. In one motion, Sherman righted it and got back on. Hal strode over and grabbed the handlebars. Come on, buddy, he said. We'll get the car later. Sherman took a look at him and shoved the bike out from under himself. It wheeled away and toppled over. He headed off blindly in the opposite direction. Hal took him by the shoulder and led him up to the porch. Caitlin came out in her bathrobe. Dad's coming, she said, moving to let Sherman and Hal pass. In the hall, Sherman broke away. Let me go, he said. He bowled off toward his room. Hal and Delilah rushed after him. He went faster. Right by the steps leading down to the playroom, they caught up with him and tried to drag him back to the kitchen. He tripped and fell. Caitlin and Chicky, still back in the hall, couldn't see what happened, but they heard Sherman thudding down the steps. Oh, my God, Delilah said. <clears throat> He's going to kill himself. Caitlin touched Chicky gently. Are you all right? He nodded. Mr. Vincent appeared at the banister upstairs, a blue towel wrapped around his waist. Quick, Dad, cried Caitlin. He needs help. Mr. Vincent descended the stairs, not saying anything, frowning. They followed him down the hallway. <coughs> Delilah said, he won't listen. He's all cut up. Everyone crowded onto the landing. Down on the playroom floor, Sherman was floundering to his knees. Can you get up here? Asked Mr. Vincent, staying at the top. Sherman peered upward with measuring eyes and gripped the banister. I want to talk to you, he said, enunciating each word carefully. Come up here, then, said Mr. Vincent. Sherman hauled himself along the banister, which was an old oar. His father said, Are you drunk? Yep, said Sherman. Mr. Vincent turned to Chicky. Where's the car? Down by the singers. He hit a hydrant. You OK, Mr. Vincent said, not as a question. His chest was the color of a pale crab shell, yellowish and soft. Chicky's eyes welled up. Uh-huh. Sherman said, I want to talk to you. When Sherman got drunk, he'd get this thug voice. Let's take a look at that cut, said Mr. Vincent, heading for the kitchen. You might need stitches. Mr. Vincent snapped on the light and went around the table. Delilah tried asking Sherman to the sink, tried leading Sherman to the sink, but he brushed her aside, looking only at his father. He leaned heavily against the counter. Delilah stamped her foot. Will you let me? 
Sherman kept glaring at Mr. Vincent. You're my father, he said, oblivious of everyone else. Caitlin and Chicky hung back by the calendar. Delilah said, Dad, will you tell him to let me wash it off? Caitlin hugged herself. The bathrobe she had on was an old one of Mum's. I think we should take him to the hospital, she said. Sherman's voice was eerie and low. Are you my father or not? Mr. Vincent sat down at the head of the table. Of course I am, he said in his nervous, deep voice. He rested his elbows on the table, locked his hands, and rubbed his thumbs together earnestly. They all waited, staying very still. Then you should act like a father, Sherman said. Everybody looked at him, then at Mr. Vincent. He pushed back his chair and sat up straight as a rod, the way he did when he was demonstrating posture, and firmly planted his hands on his bare knees. He looked at Sherman and waited. The thug voice was thick. Then why don't you never act like it? Mr. Vincent stayed stiff. Like what? Sherman stared at him, his head set. Delilah touched his arm and whispered Sherman, but he wasn't hearing a thing. Mr. Vincent stood up. You're drunk, he said. I'm not going to talk to someone who's drunk. He tried to go between the table and the counter to leave, but Sherman grabbed his arm, pinching it, making white marks. I want to talk to you, he said through clenched teeth. Mr. Vincent yanked his arm away. Now cut this out. I'll talk to you when you're sober, he said, disgusted. He hurried out of the room, bumping into stray chairs on the way. All the children turned in the direction of his diminishing footsteps. <clears throat> then from Sherman came a kind of wail, a hollow cry like something heard out on a marsh, and he looped around at the waist. Delilah tried to calm him, her hands fluttering around as if she were chasing after a bird that had gotten into the house. Caitlin let out a sob and clapped her palm over her mouth, staring at Sherman. Chicky looked at her. It was like when their mother died, when you first heard the news, when it first hit you, it was like that. You couldn't breathe. It was as if the devil had appeared for an instant and you couldn't breathe. Sherman kept up his wail, his shoulders swaying. As she watched him, Delilah's eyes got wider and wider, and then she began to cry softly. She touched him, saying, oh, Shermie, oh, honey. Then she got taken over by her own crying and turned to Hal and put her face into his chest, and her shoulders shook up and down, and her neck showed where the hair parted. Chicky stepped past them and went to the back door and opened it and stood there. The crickets outside, a million of them, were ticking, reek, 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 in the dark. He turned back around. Then it wasn't the same anymore as when their mother had died. It wasn't as if you had seen the devil only in a flash. It wasn't as if he had appeared for an instant and then was gone. Now the feeling was this that the devil had swooped down and had landed and was lingering with them all, hulking in the middle of the kitchen table, settling down to stay. Um, I understand that you've all been sort of looking at this book um, in terms of the sort of depiction of, of alcoholism in it, um, in, in a way, that last image of this, the devil sort of planting himself in the kitchen table could be switched into a big sort of bottle, <laughs> um, putting itself right down there, because there, there is a, an, an aspect of, of the, a, a large aspect of, of the Vincent family's troubles that can be directly sort of related to, to uh, there being a disease in the house.